With the recent appearance of the terrifying ghost Mache, let's review all the events that have happened in this horror movie universe to witness its development over time. Please note that this video will spoil all the content of The Conjuring, Annabelle, The Nun, and The Curse of La Llorona, so please consider this before watching. Although the con was born too late, the nun's time, or master's time, was the first in the entire timeline of the universe. The film opens with the story of two girls who were attacked by martyrs in the Coretta prison in Romania. One of them was kidnapped, while the other, out of fear, also decided to seek help. A peasant named Frenchie discovered the body and reported it to the Vatican. Upon receiving orders from the Vatican, Father Burke, along with Archbishop Irene and Frenchie, embarked on a journey to uncover the mystery of the tomb in the monastery of Heo Lam. In the movie, it is revealed that the reason why Charles Burke wants to embark on this mission is because he is haunted by guilt over his past failure to save a kidnapped boy. Irene has shared that she has had issues with the phrase, Mary points the way, or Mary leads the way, since she was a child. As a result, the church took her in and raised her. In The Nun, Valak used three people to carry out a cat and mouse strategy, subjecting them to terrifying threats repeatedly. Next up, the film delves deeper into the story of the night when Wei was taken away from prison. According to the women in Kortha, during the Dark Ages, a sorcerer with a strong inclination towards dark magic summoned Valak the demon. However, before Chotloth came to power, the Dark Knights were able to stop this sorcerer. Many years later, the Second War erupted, causing severe damage to the seal of Kortha's prison. As a result, Valak was able to escape and went on a killing spree, taking over the prison. In order to prevent the demon from possessing their bodies and destroying the final line of defense, the women in Kortha chose to sacrifice themselves. After a tense argument with the devil, during which there seemed to be no way out for the three of them, Irene had a sudden realization about the meaning behind Mary's clues. This insight allowed her to locate and use the blood of the Lord to push back Valak. However, the conclusion of the nun reveals a bigger picture, connecting the mysteries of both The Conjuring and its sequel. In particular, the final scene of the film shows Frenchie with a treacherous expression, suggesting that he has been possessed by Valak. In fact, Frenchie is Morris, a villain introduced in a case that was solved by Warren's wife. Before we move on to The Conjuring, let's take a closer look at Annabelle. Annabelle's Creation is a prequel story about the origins of a doll with a terrifying face containing a ghostly soul. In 1943, the family of the doll maker, Esther and Samuel Mullins, suffered a devastating loss when their seven-year-old daughter died in a car accident. Overcome with grief, Annabelle's parents made a deal with an evil spirit, agreeing to let it possess one of Samuel's dolls in exchange for the chance to see their daughter again. However, they soon realized their mistake and hid the doll in their daughter's room, locking it in a closet and sealing it with a sacred key. Twelve years later, in 1955, they made the decision to start a successful business by opening their doors to welcome a group of girls, including Charlotte, to Tatooine. Unfortunately, tragedy struck when a malicious entity targeted Janice, a sick girl. The malevolent spirit had enticed Janice to free the Annabelle doll from its cage in order to possess the girl and plot a way to eliminate everyone. Despite successfully killing two members of the couple, it was eventually exposed by the other characters and ultimately destroyed. It's a shame that they could only confine her to the closet. After a terrifying night, the police arrived at the scene, but the house revealed nothing but a doll in the closet. Janice managed to escape and found refuge in another orphanage in Santa Monica. She changed her name to Annabelle and was eventually adopted by the Higgins family. Annabelle was released in 2014 shining as a star in the universe of horror movies. The film Annabelle opens with a scene featuring two nurses and a man who are deeply in love with each other. They have received the Annabelle doll as a gift and it holds a special place in their hearts. The story then takes us back to 1967, a year before the events of the film, to follow the journey of John and Mia Forms. The couple is eagerly awaiting the arrival of their first child. As Mia is an avid doll collector, John decides to surprise her with the long-awaited Annabelle doll that she has been searching for. But suddenly, one night, Mia woke up and heard a scream coming from her neighbors, the Higgins family. John went to their house to check and found that everything was damaged. When Mia returned home to report to the police and call for help, she was attacked by a woman and a man she didn't recognize. The woman introduced herself as Annabelle Higgins and claimed that the man with her was her boyfriend. 
Mia remembered hearing about Annabelle and her boyfriend two years ago when they had left their homes and joined a gang. Shortly after, the man was fatally shot by the police and Annabelle, or more precisely, Janice, was discovered to have taken her own life in the room. She was found holding a doll stained with blood and a peculiar symbol was found on the wall. Mia was rushed to the emergency room after the attack, but fortunately, both she and her baby were unharmed. Despite the traumatic experience, the Forms family tried to move on with their lives. However, they soon started to encounter inexplicable supernatural occurrences. In an attempt to rid themselves of any potential negative energy, Mia got rid of Annabelle's doll. However, the strange events persisted. When their daughter was born, the family made the decision to move into a small apartment. While cleaning, Mia stumbled upon Annabelle once again, but this time, she decided to leave the doll on a shelf rather than getting rid of it. Everything seemed to be back to normal, but the residents of the Forms apartment building were still experiencing some unexplainable supernatural phenomena. Mia had recently learned about the attack on Eveline, the owner of the local bookstore. Upon investigating further, she discovered that the bookstore was haunted and that the ghost was targeting Leia's soul. Mia wasted no time and quickly contacted Prince Paris to intervene and prevent any further destruction caused by Annabelle. However, even the prince himself had fallen victim to the attack and was seriously injured. At the hospital, Chaperez warned John that the devil was after Mia, not Leia as they had initially thought. He explained that Mia would willingly sacrifice her soul to save her daughter. Worried, John immediately called home to warn Mia, but the signal was interrupted and she was unable to hear his warning. Meanwhile, Mia was with Evelyn when she suddenly began to be attacked by Annabelle. In a state of despair, Mia heard the devil's voice and made the decision to jump off the roof in order to save her daughter. Luckily, John arrived just in time to stop her. While Mia was still in tears, Evelyn took Annabelle's doll and used a soul dagger to bring Leia back. The next day, the farmer's wife and son found Leah unharmed in the pot. Ever since, her supernatural abilities have vanished. In the final scene of the movie, Annabelle is seen in an old-fashioned store and is purchased by a grandmother for her daughter. This is the same nurse who had appeared at the beginning of the film. Later, we found out that the nurse was speaking with Warren's wife. They had come to return the doll to the ward. On the way back, Lorraine noticed that Annabelle was acting as a signal station, possibly waking up the ghosts. Are you okay? In 1971, Roger and Carolyn Perrin moved with their five daughters, Andrea, Nancy, Christine, Cindy, and April, to a new farmhouse in Harrisville, Rhode Island. From the moment they arrived, the Perrin family experienced strange occurrences, such as all the clocks in the house stopping at 3, 7 a.m. The next morning, Carolyn and Roger were found dead in the garden with strange bruises on Carolyn's body. Carolyn also reported hearing a clap when no one was around. In another incident, their daughter Cindy was sedated and hit her head in the old closet. The climax of the haunting was when one of the older girls was attacked by the spirit of an elderly woman. In desperation, Carolyn sought help from the wife of the famous paranormal investigator, Warren. While researching the history of the house, Ed and Lorraine discovered that it belonged to a witch named Bathsheba. In 1863, at 3, 7 a.m., she sacrificed her child to Satan and then committed suicide. Before her death, she made a vow that anyone who tried to take her land would suffer, including the Perron family. Lauren also discovered documents detailing numerous murders and suicides of previous residents of this house. As a result, the two have concluded that the house requires a funeral. Upon further investigation, Lorraine witnessed the trapped souls of the people captured by Bathsheba. It became clear to her that Bathsheba's true intention was to possess the mother's body and manipulate the souls to kill her own son. Before Warren's wife and son could save her, they faced several difficulties. They first had to seek permission from the Vatican, but were unable to break the vows due to the Perron family not following the same religion. Moreover, Bathsheba, using the Wi-Fi interface of Annabelle, found a way to attack Judy, Warren's wife's daughter, while she was at home. However, Ed and Lorraine intervened just in time. Soon after, the devil took Caroline's soul and began to manipulate her, forcing the two husbands to act quickly and save her. Caroline was under the witch's hypnotic spell at this point. Warren's wife and son worked together to fight back against the devil's control and bring Caroline back to her normal self, just in time before Bathsheba could kill her. At the end of the film, Ed and Lorraine return home after killing a deer at Perron's house. 
The scene cuts off as Ed enters the room filled with haunted objects, places the old music box on an empty spot on the shelf, and exits. Annabelle Comes Home most likely takes place around 1972. Due to their busy schedules, Ed and Lorraine often have to travel, so they hired a babysitter named Mary Ellen to take care of their daughter, Judy. One day, Mary Ellen's friend, Daniela, came to visit and heard about her job at the Warren household. Curious, Daniela snuck into the room where the haunted objects were kept, hoping to find a way to communicate with her deceased father. However, in her attempt to find a connection, she accidentally released the malevolent spirit of Annabelle, unleashing a terrifying chain of events. Not only was Annabelle freed, but other malevolent ghosts also emerged and began to attack anyone in their path, including Judy, Mary Ellen, Daniela, and even Mary Ellen's crush, Bob Pomeroy. Judy came to the realization that the only solution to end everything was to return Annabelle to her cage. Utilizing her gift of sensing her mother's words, Judy was able to communicate with the spirit that protected her and locate Annabelle's doll. However, as they attempted to put Annabelle back in the cage, they were ambushed by vengeful ghosts who fought back fiercely. After a grueling battle against the destructive spirits, Judy and her companion were finally able to secure Annabelle back in her cage, bringing an end to the chaos. In 1973, during the time of the horror universe, the events of The Curse of La Llorona took place. The film follows the story of a social worker named Ana Garcia, who is in the process of separating two children, Carlos and Thomas, from their mother. After realizing that something was not quite right, Ana takes the two children to a safe place at the center of society. However, on their first night at the new location, the vengeful spirit of the ghostly mother cries out, luring the two boys to a nearby river, where they tragically drown. When their bodies are found, the boy's mother, Patricia, is also present. She blames Anna for her son's deaths, claiming that her previous strange behavior was an attempt to protect them from the ghostly mother. At the same time, Anna's two children, Chris and Sam, faced an evil spirit, but managed to escape death just in time. After the incident, Anna sought out Perez's father to learn more about this malevolent force. It was during this meeting that she discovered her mother had passed away 300 years ago. Her mother was a beautiful woman with a husband and two sons, but her husband had cheated on her with a younger woman. This betrayal caused her mother to become resentful towards her two sons, eventually leading her to drown them in a river. Realizing her grave mistake, her mother then committed suicide, trapping her soul in this world. After Anna touched the ghost's mother once again, she went to jail to confront Patricia. Anna was aware that Patricia was attempting to lure the ghost's mother in order to capture her two children. When she returned home, Anna's family continued to interact with the ghost's mother. As a result, Sam almost drowned. With the help of an ex-pilgrim named Raphael, Anna's two children fight back against the ghostly mother. In the midst of the fiery chaos, Patricia suddenly appears with a gun, seeking revenge on the film's main character. However, using the necklace that was given to her by the ghostly mother's son, Chris is able to transform the vengeful spirit into a regular human in an instant. This gives Anna the chance to appear and rescue the young girl. Despite the fact that Anna's family was safe, they still noticed a puddle of blood outside the house the next morning. Six years after the parents' event, Ed and Lorraine Warren were involved in another extremely difficult divorce case in Enfield, England. Peggy Hodgson resided in the house with her four children, Janet, Margaret, Johnny, and Billy. After Janet used the elevator, strange phenomena began to occur in the house, such as a car appearing in the attic and a mysterious man's voice seemingly coming from nowhere. Janet became trapped and in a state of panic, scratched the person who finally arrived to help her. She also exhibited odd behavior, such as flying around in the air. Concerned for her daughter's well-being, Peggy called the police to investigate the strange occurrences. When the officers arrived, they witnessed a chair moving on its own and concluded that the situation was beyond their expertise. They advised Peggy to seek help from the church. From that point on, the Hodgson house received a great deal of attention and scrutiny. The media repeatedly interviewed the family, trying to determine if the events were truly supernatural or simply a hoax. During one of these interviews, Janet was reportedly possessed by a ghost named Bill Wilkins, who was believed to be the previous owner of the house. At that time at Warren's house, Ed drew a picture of a figure he saw in a dream. This figure was the same monster that Lorraine saw, and it had the ability to be seen by those with the power to see beyond. This monster was known as Valak. In the illusion, Lauren witnessed Ed being stabbed to death by a block of wood. She asked the spirit its name, but received no answer. When she woke up, she saw that she had used a sharp knife to stab her hand. As the events became too much for the Hodgson family to handle, the story reached Ed and Lauren through a recording. 
the couple was then sent to England to investigate the ghostly occurrences. Initially, Lauren's abilities were hindered by Valak. Additionally, there were claims that Janet had broken into the kitchen, but there was no evidence of a ghost. This made it difficult for Lauren to see the truth and caused Warren to believe it was all a joke, leading him to leave. However, on the way home, Ed checked the recordings and discovered a hidden message from Bill Wilkins. Mr. Monk immediately warned Lauren, and she realized that the film reveals the presence of the Valak demon. It is later discovered that Bill Wilkins is merely a puppet controlled and manipulated by the master. In the climax, under the control of Valak, Janet steps out of the window and commits suicide. Despite suffering greatly, Ed is fortunate enough to keep Janet in the group. Following the birth of the demon, Lauren uncovers its name through the lines in the previous scene. Remember this name, Lauren. She succeeded in rescuing Valak from hell, saving both Janet and her husband. The Conjuring 3 was based on a unique case in American history, in which a person was murdered for being believed to be possessed. The opening scene depicts Warren performing a ritual for David, the younger brother of Debbie, who is the girlfriend of the accused, Arnie Johnson. The devil inside David was so strong that it caused Ed to faint. As he lost consciousness, Ed witnessed the devil leaving David and entering Arnie. When Ed woke up in the hospital, it was too late. Arnie had been possessed by the devil and had stabbed the homeowner, Bruno 22 Nat. Despite his lawyer's defense that Arnie's actions were a result of possession, the court still found him guilty and sentenced him to 10 to 20 years in prison. However, the story did not end there. The Warrens realized that the devil had not disappeared and decided to dig deeper into the case. They discovered a witch's relic hidden under Arnie's house and sought the help of Chuck Kastner, a researcher on Satanism mentioned in the Annabelle story. Through Chuck, they learned that the relic was a guide for a will. The truth was finally revealed when the Warrens assisted in a similar case. The death of 22-year-old Katie Lincoln, who was stabbed, also resulted in the loss of her friend, Lorraine. Thanks to her sense of awareness, Lorraine witnessed the tragic event and saw Katie's murderer, Jessica, who is now missing. It was revealed that Jessica had been abducted, and after killing Katie, she took her own life. The body of the witch who had been involved in the incident was discovered in Jessica's memory box. While in the morgue, Lauren was surprised to see Isla, the witch, making a wish using a dead body. Because the link between them was a two-way road, Isla was also able to see Lauren. Mew then summoned a dead body to harm Warren's wife, but luckily, both of them remained unharmed. Lauren was also able to prevent Isla from controlling Arnie into committing suicide in prison. In the film, Isla is the secret daughter of her father, Kastner. Since childhood, she has been deeply influenced by her father's research, making her a subject of satanic rituals. In order to fulfill her desires, Isla must sacrifice a child, her lover, and innocent people of God. Her ultimate goal is to reach S. To capture her, Allah sent a witch hidden in a vase to her house. Not knowing the truth, Lauren went to her father's house to gather more information. Her father then confessed everything to Lauren and directed her towards his house. Lauren followed her father for a while until Isla suddenly appeared and brutally killed her father before chasing after Lauren. At the same time, Ed snuck out and rushed to Jack Kastner's house to assist his wife. After a struggle, Ed was hypnotized to attack Lauren. However, the couple successfully destroyed the altar and broke Ella's curse. The witch was subsequently apprehended by a benevolent spirit to settle her unpaid debt. Despite successfully stopping the witch, it is unfortunate that Arnie must still face a five-year prison sentence for murder. At the end of the movie, Eddard Chekhov takes Tate from the altar to the room where he keeps the haunted objects, including the painting of Valak and the Annabelle doll. That's all for now. In the future, we will see more movies about the nun and the crooked man. For further updates, please subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell. Thank you for watching. Is that kid staring at you? Look at me. I love you more than I've ever loved anyone before. <laughs>